All right, hey, how's it going? Peter here from BlackRock Business, and I am very excited today to share with you how to create a customer in QuickBooks Point of Sale. Uh, don't forget to jump on over to blackrockbusiness.com for all of your point of sale needs and QuickBooks. We have many blog posts, tutorials, walkthroughs, um, tips, tricks, all that kind of stuff, as well as hardware and other wonderful goodies for sale. So let's get to it. Here we are, QuickBooks point of sale. Today we're going over, like I said, creating a customer. Now I'll tell you right off the bat that you're probably going to want to check into your company preferences. We just have one little setting that we want to check on here and that is in the customers area right here. So it's going to ask us about our customers. When you create a new customer, do you want to have use with QuickBooks on? Yes or no? I'm going to say that you probably want that on no. If you send every single customer over to QuickBooks, uh, there are list limits in QuickBooks. It's like 12,000 or 14,000, something like that uh, list limit in QuickBooks where once you reach that, that many customers in your QuickBooks accounting, then you get stuck. You can't create any more customers unless you upgrade to enterprise and pay every single month. You don't want that. So keep this on no. Uh, it's on yes. You probably want to switch it to no. Now you still will end up sending some customers to QuickBooks if you're doing anything with customer accounts. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that because when, when you try to charge to account, it pops up and asks you if you want to do that. So don't worry about it. Uh, now I'm going to tell you there's three places where you can start creating a customer. Some people love the old menu system up here, so they can go on the customers menu and click on new customer. So that's one way. You can head on over to the customer list and you can hit add in the upper right. That's another way. Or the way that it happens most often is you're in the middle of making a sale, you ask your customer if they've ever been there before and they haven't and if uh, if you're doing a good job at your store and uh, maintaining your customers you're gonna want this customer list most often I see creating customers uh, the tool you want there is their email address so that you can add that to your list for newsletters and updates and coupons and whatever sales uh, so here on the make a sale screen you are ringing somebody up and they are a brand new customer. So you just click on the customer dropdown and at the very bottom, it's add new customer. Now, any of those three different ways that we just spoke of will bring up this particular screen here. And uh, we're gonna go over some of the fields here. Some are very obvious, some are not. Uh, I just want you to have a full understanding of what you can do with creating a new customer. <clears throat> so first off, um, if you're a retail or a public facing store, you're probably going to just have a first and last name, something like that. Now, uh, certain stores are actually going to have maybe corporate customers. Uh, I know like landscaping, nurseries and uh, uh, groweries, uh, different places like that might have uh, actual landscapers that come in and buy things from them and uh, they would want to be tracked as a company because maybe multiple employees come in at different time and they want it to all be under um, the green, you know, landscaping company. And uh, that would go along with if they're charging things to account and are racking up a bill, they want it to all be under company. So that's why we have track as company there. I do believe that that's only available in pro or multi-store, not basic for the QuickBooks point of sale. Now we're gonna move on. We got uh, some really easy, obvious uh, fields here. We got phone number, mobile, email. Like I said, email is gonna be super important as you grow your business. You're gonna want to start collecting emails so that you can either have a newsletter or um, updates go out to your news list, to your to your email list. Some people are like, oh, I don't want to spam people. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just a proven way of life, uh, way of business these days. 
is you want to collect emails, you want to send stuff out so people don't forget about your store, people don't forget about your business. They come in once or twice, they totally forget about you, suddenly they get an email two months later and they're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that store, I got to get over there and get that other thing I wanted that I saw last time I was there. So we got uh, Bob at Jones.com, our good pal Bob Jones here. And I don't know why this check marks here. I mean, seriously, if they weren't okay to email, they probably just wouldn't give you their email. Uh, Bob lives on 123 Baker Street. Uh, we'll say he lives back in my hometown of Duluth, Minnesota, 55 five something. Uh, so there we got pretty much their pedigree information. Uh, a lot of stores I see don't, you know, collect the address. It's not a big deal, but maybe, maybe your store or business that ships people things. So you might want that. Uh, now we got custom fields next. Uh, I'm going to tell you that custom fields are fields that do whatever you want them to do. Uh, in this case, just for this particular video, I've set up two custom fields uh, just so we can see that they're here, otherwise they don't even show up. You can do this in the settings of the point of sale, but that's going to be a subject of a different video. So today I set up a custom field for driver's license number and whether or not this person is part of the value member club or something like that. I was just trying to make something up, so, you know, I don't know why you'd have somebody's driver's license number or social security or some other weird field like that, but it's just an example. So this person has a driver's license number and they are a value member. Maybe this is something you want your employees to see when they come in so they get special perks. I don't know. Um, now, besides custom fields and speaking of value member, which was totally made up, uh, there is a rewards program inside point of sale if you do or do not know that. Um, you can set up certain thresholds where customers get special rewards. And there's a setting in there to ask whenever you create a customer whether they want to be a rewards member or to automatically set them as a rewards member, which you probably want to do if you're running a rewards program. So uh, in this case, I don't have that turned on. So I'm just going to say, yeah, I want this person to be a rewards member. And it looks like after they spend $600, they're going to get a reward, whatever that was. I don't remember what that was. So um, this is the rewards area. They spend until they reach the threshold, and then they get a special reward. Now, there is there has been certain occasions where, for some reason, uh, the person either didn't put their name in, uh, the clerk didn't put their name in, the customer in there, and... Uh, they spent a bunch of money, but they didn't get credit and they didn't get their reward because it wasn't in their customer history. So in this area right here, we have a button that says new and you can actually just award the reward to your customer because you've decided they deserve it. Uh, a new reward will be issued to this customer. Do you also want to reset the customer's purchase balance to zero? Probably. It really depends on the situation. So now I've given them the reward, which in this case, it looks like it was 25% off and that's available on their next purchase. Uh, when they are earning rewards in here, you can also take them away. You can remove them or when they turn red, you know they've expired. So moving on with Bob Jones and creating him as a customer. We have a handy dandy little customer notes area here that we can say, uh, you know, on Tuesday, the if Bob came in and I think he was stealing I don't know you could put whatever notes you want in here um, and if you'd like you can also date stamp them so uh, so we can see when that was you can also print the notes out I don't know never seen anybody print notes out but maybe you got something else that you're tracking in here um, the possibilities are quite infinite for what you could do in the customer notes field and uh, so yeah use it as however you wish I guess now next we have QuickBooks options now that setting in the beginning that I showed you um, said do you want to set to use with QuickBooks every time on every new customer I, I'm gonna say no so that you don't fill up your list limit in QuickBooks accounting uh, charge account 
you can leave that off. Uh, if you want somebody to be able to charge on, on a credit account when they're making a sale, uh, in other words, a tab per se, uh, you can hit the account button on their sale and it will ask you if you want to enable this part. If you know they're going to have a charge account, I guess you could turn it on right away. Um, but otherwise, when you hit the account button, it will turn it on during the sale. Now, account limit. Um, that would be for this tab. If you want to give them a limit, maybe they can only spend $100. Maybe they can spend $1,000 and charge it to account. Uh, with account, that's an, again, that's another subject for another video, but you can send out uh, statements and invoices at the end of the month if you want them to pay up on their account. Now, if this customer was in QuickBooks because they've got financial dealings with you, then you would be able to press this button here and it would pop up QuickBooks accounting program and it would bring you right to that customer so that you can see the transactions in the financial software on, well, I don't know, what they owe you or what they have credit for. Uh, it's just a nice quick shortcut to get to that customer in QuickBooks accounting. Now, customer ID, you see that right here, that is just a generated number by point of sale that automatically goes here. I think you can change it if you really want to, but I'd probably recommend against it. Um, just leave it alone. It's it's just a standard number. Um, I believe if you do, there, there are some special things that you can do with it. Uh, if you want customers that come into your store to have uh, a card that identifies them, maybe you don't want to look up their account every time with their name. You could actually just scan a barcode of this number and it would automatically add them to the receipt. Uh, that might be a, another video someday. Now we've got alternate phone and alternate contact. Um, pretty obvious here. You can just have multiple phone numbers. Apparently it's up to three. And maybe you want to throw Bob's wife, Susan, on here. Now next we have customer type. I don't have any programmed in here yet because we're going to cover that later. But customer type would be a, a special designation that you want to give certain customers so that when you do reporting on customers, uh, you could split them up by these types. Uh, let's say you have a retail customer and an online customer and a wholesale customer. Maybe those are the three customer types you have and you want to do reporting separately for each or you want to compare reporting separately for each. That would be a good use of this. Uh, that is set up on that same page in customer area uh, for company settings. So you can set up customer types and if you feel like it, you can, when you're creating a customer, assign them each time to each different customer type. Now tax location. Uh, in the tax setup, you can set up different locations. I know I have some customers who, um, they, they might sell to different counties or different states and, and they have a nexus in those states for tax. And so, uh, you could have several different counties listed here for your tax locations. And this particular customer, uh, you could be delivering goods to their tax location. And so you would choose the tax for that county and that's what it would charge them so that you can pay your taxes appropriately on their sales. Now, uh, of course, we've got, you know, nonprofit customers would probably be tax exempt. Next, we have discounts. So if you want to, if you want to just set up a discount for this customer Bob Jones every time, maybe Bob Jones is your best buddy and he gets 10% off all of his purchases. So if you added that here, every time you rang him up, when you chose his customer name, he'd get 10% off everything. Uh, we also have markdown price levels. Uh, this will be covered later, but you can set up five different price levels uh, regular price is normally what everybody gets. Uh, maybe employees have their own price level that's lower. Wholesale customers have a uh, price level that's lower. So maybe Bob Jones is one of these other groups besides regular price. But if he's regular price, then you can just leave customer discount off. Next, uh, we think Bob was stealing. We also might think that he writes bad checks. So we may choose not to accept checks from him 
And if we tried to hit the check button when Bob Jones is trying to buy something, it would pop up and tell us that we don't accept checks from Bob. Now this last area here is addresses, and this comes more into uh, purview when you are shipping things to people, obviously. Uh, you can set up multiple addresses. The contact info here normally gets recorded as a bill to address. Uh, we can add a second address if we like. Maybe it's uh, location two. And, uh, oh, we got uh, Bob Jones, green, landscaping, and it's at a different location. And maybe this regular info over here is where we normally uh, contact Bob, but maybe location two is where we actually want to default ship to. So there we go. We got location two, which is the default shipping address. We can also designate not to mail to his billing address. We can add numerous different shipping addresses here, or we can delete them. And then you can also actually print labels. And so you could choose your printer and you can print mailing labels with the Avery label maker or Avery sheets. We'll just look at a quick preview and it's pretty obvious. Okay, so this would be like an Avery label. All right, so I know that was a lot all at once and I'm really glad that you're here to listen and understand all of these fields and what they might do for you and your business and your point of sale. My name is Peter. I'm with BlackRock Business, and I'm glad you come along and learn this. And I can't wait to see you at our next video. So have a great day.